Efficiency Production Incorporated, America's leading trench shielding and shoring manufacturer, presents Vertical Hydraulic Shoring, Superior Versatility and Safety. Where trench shields are used to protect workers against cave-ins, shores are used to actually apply pressure to trench walls to prevent cave-ins. Efficiency Production has been manufacturing aluminum hydraulic shores since 1971, including the manufacture of all rails, cylinders, and components. Vertical shores consist of a pair of strong 8-inch aluminum rails that are connected by hydraulic cylinders. The hydraulic cylinders are pressurized outside of the trench with an easy-to-use hand pump. Both the rails and cylinders come in various sizes, offering superior versatility when working around existing utilities and supporting trench walls near structures. Whenever working with shores, it is important to remember a few simple points of safety. Shores are designed to fold, which allows for easy installation, but also creates several pinch points. Always carry shores in the proper position with your fingers to the outside of the rail, away from the cylinder pivot points. Vertical shores are used in unison with a special type of plywood called finform. Three quarter inch finform is acceptable for the use of plywood according to OSHA standards. It is not, however, considered a structural member. When using hydraulic vertical shores, one of the key components is going to be your hydraulic shoring pump can. Efficiency offers two models, the plastic model and the steel model. Both are acceptable. Both models are going to require the use of a biodegradable shoring fluid, either a summer grade fluid or a winter grade fluid. When using the summer grade, you would add one quart of fluid to five gallons of water. When using the winter grade, you would add one gallon of fluid to three gallons of water. Please note that the use of diesel fuel and hydraulic oil are not acceptable. Before you can put the pump can into service, the pump can must be tested. That includes either the steel model or the plastic model. Both are tested in the same fashion. Release the quick coupler. Turn the quarter turn valve counterclockwise. Stroke the can two times or until the gauge reads between 750 and 1500 pounds. Allow the gauge to stabilize, which this has done at 1000 pounds. Wait 10 to 15 seconds. This can is stabilized at 1000 pounds. Therefore, I can release the pressure and this can is ready to put into service. Two different tools will help you position the shore, the release tool and the removal hook. Lay the shore down with the fitting side of the cylinder next to the ground. The hose fitting will slide over the quick coupler fitting on the cylinder. Place the release tool under the handle and fold the shore down. Pick up the handle and the release tool and walk the shore into the trench. After the shore is properly positioned, close the quarter turn valve and begin pumping the fluid into the cylinder. Pump the cylinder until the pressure gauge reads into the green area, or approximately 750 psi. Watch the pressure gauge for a moment to make sure the cylinder is maintaining the proper pressure. Do not allow someone in the trench if the gauge does not hold the pressure. Now that the shore is in the trench, Use the release tool to pop the hose off the quick coupler. Pull the hose out of the trench and hook it up to the pump can, keeping the fitting on the end of the hose out of the dirt. Every job should have a competent person assigned to the project. One of the jobs of the competent person is to make sure that the shoring is properly installed. Please refer to the tabulated data from efficiency production when installing the shores. A good rule of thumb, the top cylinder should be somewhere between one to two feet from the top of the trench, and the bottom cylinder should be no farther than four feet from the bottom of the trench. One other thing that the tabulated data will show you once the soil is classified is how far horizontally the shores need to be stalled apart. 
in most cases somewhere between four to six feet. Again, please refer to the tabulated data. The tabulated data chart will also help you determine the necessary length of the shore's rails and the number, width, and proper placement of cylinders that are required for your project. One of the things that you may encounter on your project are trenches that have cross utilities running through them, making it very difficult to use conventional trench boxes that you need to push and pull the grade. That's where hydraulic vertical shores come into play. This is an example of a spot shore, a single shore. Use this shore around that cross utility until you get beyond it where you can pick back up with the steel shields or the conventional hydraulic shoring. Make sure to check your tabulated data for proper positioning in the trench. Efficiency hydraulic shores are equipped with a safety bleed off hole, which prevents cylinders from extending past the safe working width. If this happens, either a different size cylinder is needed, or you can quickly add extensions to the shore cylinders if you need additional width. The installation of cylinder extensions has been designed to be an easy task. Take out the cotter pins that hold the rail pins, and then take out the clipped head rail pins and remove the socket rail. The socket pads are also held together by small keepers. Take out the small socket pin and the socket pad and repeat the operation for the other cylinder. At this point, the over sleeves will slide right off. The cylinder extension will slide right onto the cylinder. These extensions also have the small circle cotters. Take out the extension pin and let the load tube drop into place. Line up the three holes in the over sleeve, the load plug, and the cylinder piston head and put the small pin back through the three holes and secure with the circle cotter. Repeat the operation for additional cylinders. Take the circle cotter and socket pad pin out of the extension and reinsert the socket pad. Repin the socket pad with the small socket pad pin and circle cotter. Now simply reinstall the socket rail and secure with the clipped head rail pins and keepers. And now your shore has been extended and is ready for use in the field. In 2005, Efficiency Production developed a one-piece extension that makes it even easier to install shore extensions in the field. First, take out the socket pad pin and then pull off the socket rail with the socket pad still attached. Now simply place the one-piece extension over the end of the piston rod and align the three holes in the extension over sleeve and piston rod and reinstall the socket pad pin and keeper. Remove the socket pad from the socket rail by pulling out the clipped head rail pin. Reinstall the socket rail over the one piece extension and resecure with the clipped head rail pin and keeper. Your shore is now extended and ready for use. The removal of shores should be followed closely with the backfilling of the trench. To remove the shores, we must first release the pressure in the cylinders. About a cup of biodegradable fluid, which is 95% water, will be discharged into the trench. As the shore collapses, the worker will catch the shore with the release tool and removal hook. Hold the rail farthest away with the removal hook and allow the shore to fold. Walk away from the trench and pull the shore out. Efficiency vertical hydraulic shores are an effective method to provide a safe and productive work area when working underground. Hydraulic shores quickly and easily adapt to a variety of underground and utility project challenges. This video is just a short overview showing installation and removal procedures. Always refer to the manufacturer's tabulated data when using hydraulic shoring or call the local efficiency dealer nearest to you.